Take a deep breath, exhale, and join us for this episode of Hope Out of the Darkness. Shel Pavlis is a non-professional learning to navigate the world of suicide prevention. As a volunteer of the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention in Orange County, California, she chats with people who, like her, are affected by suicide. Hear their real life stories, learn how they keep living life to the fullest, and find out what can be done to stop suicide. Join the conversation with fellow AFSP volunteers and mental health professionals, all of whom have their own stories about suicide. Let's find hope out of the darkness. Hello, my guest today is Cindy Bowman, and she is on the board with the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention in our local chapter here in Orange County. Welcome, Cindy. Thank you, Shell. Very nice to see you. Yeah, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate your being here. So tell our listeners uh, a little bit about your role with AFSP, please. Well, I am on the board for AFSP, and I am currently the fundraising chair. So that includes um, also working with different walks and um, raising funds throughout the year. So I'm a retired uh, business systems analyst. Excellent. I love that. I love that the extra background. It kind of gives people an idea, too, of where you're coming from to mm-hmm. to your role with AFSP. And um, there might have been some overlap there, too. So, um, so going into that, tell me your story about how you first heard about AFSP and what started your journey there. Well... Um, 20 years ago, um, my sons, I have twin boys, they're 40 now, um, and they had each lost a friend to suicide the same weekend, and it was pretty devastating. I had attended one of the funerals, and I had never seen a church so packed. It, w- it was a Catholic church, and it was outside in, in the, um, um, on the lawn. There were so many kids there, so many parents. And it was just so devastating to me. And I never forgot that. So later on, um, one of my sons that had lost his friend, Kevin, he had a brother that was um, involved with AFSP. And he also had a a foundation called forlife.org. And he was having a golf tournament. And my son said, you know, do you want to go to the after party, you know, the dinner and I said, sure. So we bought tickets and stuff. There was a silent auction. And it was just the movement of people, the feeling that you got being there. And um, people trying to raise funds at this silent auction. And I thought, wow, this is this is really cool. And so Casey started talking to me about um, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. And that's how I got involved. And so I was a volunteer for a couple of years. We... Um, in 2014, we were not a chapter, and that's when I joined. 2015, we got made an official chapter for Orange County, and the rest is history. So, and I've been on the board now for about three years. Great. So you are a, really a founding member of the chapter. Yes, yes, and yeah. it's been very exciting. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. So now in your role um Let's talk a little bit about fundraising for a nonprofit and specifically for AFSPOC. Um, it's not the easiest role in the world. <laughs> fundraising <laughs> can be a challenge, and um, a lot of times it's not fun to ask people for money. So um, right. how, how did you end up in the fundraising role capacity, and what are some of the things that you do to um, – help people understand why AFSP needs money. Okay. Um, I had never been a fundraiser before. Um, I was a little shy about asking people for money. Uh, it just wasn't my role. I didn't was never a salesperson. But this was something I believed in. And I think if it's something that you believe in, that it's a lot easier. And I can get the message across, I think, very easy to people when I start talking to them. The issues with fundraising are um, trying to find the organizations, though, that are willing to give. 
and are willing to give to a nonprofit for um, suicide prevention because that's a taboo word and a lot of companies do still have stigma with that but um, so as far as fundraising I started off um, just like watching different videos and stuff and how people would go about different companies you would reach out to so I reach out to the companies I look for um, the general manager of restaurants or what have you and just reach out to them tell them our story I tell them my story why I got involved and I think that helps a little bit also um, bringing people around to seeing why this is so important um, and the funds for um, AFSP it's 80 percent goes to our programs and our research and our advocacy so you know it's a very low profit uh, very high profit um, for the charity and then 20 percent go to the admin costs great and that's great um, it, obviously there's always a cost to running a big huge nonprofit organization um, and people and businesses do like to know that most of the money that they do donate um, actually goes to right. the cause so that's really good to know so um, so in your contacts with businesses this year, um, tell me a little bit about who recently you've brought on and how they're supporting. Um, I've brought on a veterinary clinic, Northwood Animal Hospital. They're doing a sponsorship. Um, we thrive on our sponsorships that we have for various events. We just have had the Hike for Hope and we've had various sponsors for that um, different construction companies uh, real estate companies and Asbury Realty was one of them um, so by reaching out to those companies and the people that you know you share the message we also provide them with um, the possibility of doing talk saves lives for their employees and things like that so it's kind of a give back I provide them with the self-care strategies flyer so I'm trying to show them too that you know we we do want to help their employees. We're not just asking for money. This is important to get the message out. Great, and so. and for people who don't know, what is the Talk Saves Lives? Talk Saves Lives tells you um, we gather groups and we're doing it all virtually now. If you go to afsp.org, you can find um, a Talk Saves Lives in your area that will be virtually coming up we do a couple a month but then we'll also do a separate one for individual companies if you request it um, the talk safe lives tells you the warning signs um, the stigma trying to break down the stigma of suicide things that um, you can do yourself to prevent or give you empower you to ask somebody that question are you thinking about taking your life which is very important because a lot of times people feel like nobody cares and if you do ask that question and they're not suicidal that's fine but if they are and you ask that question it empowers them to talk about it and to talk about what's bothering them and maybe you can help or refer them to the suicide prevention hotline and even be there with them when they call great that's a really good explanation um, I recently actually have had been trained to be a presenter for Talk Saves Lives. So I've been giving the presentations and um, it really is a lot of really good, concise information that could be mm -hmm. immediately helpful. So it, it's a great program and they have all, all different versions of it um, too. So if someone wants, like you said, to know more information, um, go to the AFSP website and, and check out what's available. And um, you can even sign up on um, AFSP on the chapters section of the website you can even sign up yourself t for a talk saves lives presentation to, to see what it's like and they, ha they hold them all different times of day and night we want to take a quick break and recognize that today's podcast episode may not be appropriate for everyone if you are in crisis or know someone who is please call the suicide lifeline at 1-800-273-8255 or text the word HELP to 741-741.
And of course, if you feel you or someone you're with are in danger or experiencing a medical emergency, call 911. So let, let's switch gears a little bit here and talk about the events that are held over a year for AFSP. Um, you had mentioned H Hike for Hope. Um, and um, so if you could talk a little bit about, you know, that, if that's an ongoing event or um, what that's all about. And then also if you could talk about the largest event that AFSP holds um, as well, sure. that would be great. Thanks. Thank you so much. Um, and we usually hold a spring event. Um, Pre-COVID, we did Laughs for Life. It was pretty awesome. And so we would have a comedian and raise funds that way uh, with raffle prizes. And I'd sell raffle tickets out for it. And I got a little wild doing that. But <laughs> it was like, oh, come on, you want five more raffle tickets? <laughs> but so, <laughs> so, that, was so a, that was a show? Was yeah, it? yeah. It was and actually was, a show at the Coach House. Uh, comedy show. Oh, yeah. Okay, great comedy show at the coach house it was it was a lot of fun so we did that and then last year we were supposed to have a um, music event and we were unable to do that of course because of COVID so we had to cancel it at the last minute it was scheduled for March so we did not have an event so this year we were trying to decide what kind of event we wanted to have and ended up with um, hike for hope well it happened to be a virtual event because of you know COVID and stay, keeping our distance. So what that event entailed is um, we on our website had various places where people could go hike um, and things they could do along the way. They would um, take pictures of themselves with hashtag OC hike for hope and those pictures um, became a montage um, that we are celebra that we celebrated um, on June 1st. So with the hike for hope um, we raised quite a bit of money our goal was five thousand dollars and I'm still waiting for the final counts to come in but I think we will have raised upward maybe about seventeen thousand when everything's been counted so that was very successful and uh, people took pictures we have uh, one of the things we do is we paint rocks hope rocks and put afsp.org on the bottom of them and set them off you know as you're hiking or in the communities um, so that's kind of a fun event and it was things that people could do virtually we got companies involved um, different companies like United Health Group um, Allied Medical um, trying to get their employees just to do some camar camaraderie and team building um, and some of them even got together and painted rocks and um, which is very you know you start when you do something like that you really start bringing out and talking to each other um, in fact shell you and I've painted rocks together we have. Um, and you get to learn a lot about somebody when you're trying to design something and it's not quite turning out the right way <laughs> but anyway I guess that's enough for our spring event that we have this year but um, we do things like I, I want to get um, organized actually a motorcycle run I think that would be awesome with the military because I'm heavily involved with veteran suicides also I'm part of the Orange County veteran military family uh, collaborative oh. and um, representing AFSP with them and trying to help prevent veteran suicides also so um, but our main event is called the out of the darkness walk well we also have an overnight walk and that usually takes place in June but our main event is the out of the darkness walk and that is in the fall it's scheduled for October we're still trying to get the exact date and time and uh, where it's going to be but that is our largest walk of the year and um, in uh, pre-COVID we raised $197,000 and last year wow. we were only able to raise 75000 and that's because it was all virtual so things had totally changed pre-COVID we had almost we had 2,000 registered walkers and probably about 1,500 walk-ons so it was a huge event so this year we're trying to make it another huge event we're hoping it will be partially in person
and then also partially virtual so people that don't feel comfortable still gathering in the groups that they would be able to participate also with their families and friends so a hybrid version of the walk yes and, and um, yes. it's a lot more than a, just a walk um, tell tell me about or for those who don't know um, like some of the other aspects of the walk and uh, some of the um, other things that people can kind of get together on, um, for instance, the the beads and that type of right, thing. Right, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Yes, people wear. Uh, we have different color beads depending on what your loss is. Um, some people, maybe it's a blue bead. It's just for that you're a supporter of suicide prevention. Um, white beads, I believe, is lost for a child. So some people wear several beads. Um, I know in my life, it, I was touched by these um, two teenagers that lost their lives to suicide. But also, four years ago, I lost a cousin. So that just gave me another bead to wear. And we have different things that uh, we do, um, like with their, your loved one's picture on it, that line the walk. Um, we do that. We This is in the in-person walks. Um, even for the uh, virtual walks, we promote them by having somebody hold a picture of their loved one too, um, because they're not forgotten, you know. And and we're trying to make a positive out of something that was such a negative, you know. Um, the loss of life is very tragic, and it touches so many, so many people. So we try to remember our loved ones. We have a remembrance table. Um, do, and we try to do some fun things too, some family things. Like at our last in-person walk, we invited everybody to stay and have a picnic with their families or friends afterwards and celebrate the lives of their loved ones. I love that. Um, it, yes, it's it's a way for people who have been touched by suicide also to see um, it's different. I mean, you know you're not alone but it's different to be there or to see all of the other people who also have been affected and it just mm -hmm. makes um makes you feel less alone and that's encouraging and and hopeful that um everyone together can you know find find a way to to move on and, right um, we were lucky enough at our last walk to be able to have um, Brigadier General Denton Knapp attend, and he spoke. He had lost his son to suicide, and um, very personal. And being a Brigadier General, he also knows of a lot of people that have lost their lives to suicide in the military. And one of the things that you can do to a person is uh, for a person is ask them have you ever been in the military um, a lot of times they don't like to talk about it they're very humbled about it and to let them be able to talk and speak and you know get to know that person we're, we're standing next to somebody in a grocery line or something like that make eye connection with them you know talk to them sometimes people just need somebody else to talk to that is very, very true. I, I know you've encountered some circumstances where you actually ended up having a conversation about suicide with an individual who was a stranger, kind of out of the blue. Can, can, you, um, can you share one of the, those stories? Because I just think it's amazing <coughs> how if you do, um, you know, yeah. talk to someone. This, um, I'm not sure exactly what story you are talking about, but I have several. But one of them that recently happened, I was um, I was really blessed by Staples and Avanti Printing for giving me a whole bunch of flyers, donating them um, for the hike for hope. So I was one day out trying to put out all these flyers. I had got 13,000 total, <laughs> so <Wow. laughs> she'll help me do a lot of them. But but anyway, so I was putting out these flyers, and I got back in my car, and I was backing out, and this person whooped around me to get into the parking place on the other side of me. And, I mean, just we almost had this accident. And I just looked at her, you know, it's kind of like, what's this person going to say to you? 
And I looked at her, and she was a young girl, and I rolled down my window, and she's going, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And it was like, no, I, are you are you okay? You know, I just, it seems like you might be having a bad day or something. And she started talking to me, and I told her what I was doing. I was putting out these flyers. And she says, we were meant to talk today. We were just really meant to talk today. And I gave her my business card, and I said, if you ever want to talk again, give me a call. So I, I think maybe that day something got averted. You know, you just never know. But just by talking to that total stranger. Yep, you don't ever know. And a lot of other people might have reacted to that situation differently. Either, um, you know, maybe just said nothing and, you know, walked away or gotten upset about it. Um, that's what I love about right. you because you oh, you're so sweet. approach you know, things, situations with kindness, and you're always concerned about others. So that's what makes you really I, good at what you do. Thank you. I like, Can I just add one more? Yeah, of course. It was kind of important to yeah. me. Um, I had put out my card on um, Nextdoor and was advertising um, the Hike for Hope, and a man called me and said, um, I happen to be at the lake with my kids fishing <laughs> with the little ones. And this man called me and he said, I got your number and I wanted to call you because my nine-year-old um, is suicidal oh. and I don't know what to do. And here I am sitting here at the lake with my family and my kids and I'm getting chills right now because mm -hmm. it really, this really hit me hard. And um, I gave him the suicide prevention hotline, and I said, if you want me to call it with you, I can do that, but you really need to give them a call. They can find you help in your area as far as counseling and stuff, and you need to get help for your daughter. So he called me actually a couple of days after that and um, thanked me. Wow. And that was like one of the best calls. Sorry. That's amazing. <laughs> no, it's okay. What we... I mean, it's such an emotional topic, and a lot of times yeah. when, um, you know, we see webinars or um, when we see, you know, board members discussing the foundation, um, you know, we don't, right. we don't show emotion. You know, obviously, there are times when it's not entirely helpful if you're at an outreach table and someone approaches and they're right. in need or they're in crisis. It's not helpful to be all, you know, blubbery and crying. Um, right. But it is very emotional. And we, you know, I constantly find myself in tears or, you know, right. on the verge of of crying because, you know, people have died. Yeah. It's, and I have to tell I have. I have to tell you these outreach tables, you mentioned that, yes. that we used to have pre-COVID. Um, we would go out to the high schools and we would have LGBTQ information at the tables and, and these kids would come up to the table, and I shouldn't say kids, but these teenagers would come up to the table and they would say, oh, can I take this? I said, take whatever you want. We have little bracelets and, you know, buttons and things like that. I said, you know, it's all swag. Take whatever you want. And um, they would take, like, the LGBT um, brochures and stuff and say, this is for my friend. Or I have a friend that's contemplating suicide. And so many times, you know, when that teenager is saying, this is for my friend, it is for them. And I've even um, contacted counselors on their behalf to try and um, get them and their parents' help. Wow. So that's, yeah, that's amazing. And, um, and also, it's, it's sad that this is all about, again, the stigma and removing the stigma and us all being comfortable talking about mental health and being comfortable with the idea that if we were physically sick, we would ask for help or we would go to a doctor and would seek help for that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that if you, you know, have an Ill, a mental illness or if you, you know, need help in, in other areas. We need to get rid of this stigma. And that's a lot of right. why I wanted to do this podcast, of course. And I know it's one of AFSP's mission and yours as well, obviously, as, as a board member. 
Um, yeah. yeah, we need to get people comfortable talking about it, and we need to get the teenagers comfortable so that they can walk up to the table and ask for themselves and, and not feel right. like they have to hide behind the guise of needing it for a friend. Adults, too. Right, yeah. right. Um, One of the things with um, talking about suicide, too, if I can mention this, Shell, a lot of people and a lot of newscasters and um, newspapers say he committed suicide, she committed suicide. One word that we do not use with the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention and while talking about suicide is the word committed. They died by suicide. They did not commit a crime. They died by suicide, just like they would have died from cancer or any other disease. So it's very important, and it can be a touchy subject to somebody that does have um, a loved one that died by suicide. If they hear, it's a kind of a trigger, I think, if they hear somebody say they committed suicide. So words do matter. They sure do. I'm really glad you mentioned that. And actually, I saw um, there was a recent episode of a series which is ongoing. And in the series, um, one of the characters actually um, considered killing himself. And um, so in, in this particular episode, they actually uh, corrected someone who said committed suicide. One of the characters corrected them and said it's died by suicide and explained it. And it was really good to see that on a series on TV, on national TV, that yes, we need to right. educate everyone because language is so important. Right. Um, so tell me a little bit about, um, again, going back to the fundraising aspect and um, okay. some, of the, some of the other ways that you're partnering with businesses um, to to bring fun, additional funds in and to spread the awareness. Well, one thing that we've been trying to do is be a little innovative <laughs> and try to figure out different ways to fundraise. And I would like anybody to contact me if you have any great ideas or any even maybe not so great ideas. I'd love to hash them out with you and as Shell knows. <laughs> We, we like to uh, brainstorm a lot, so I'd be very happy to do that with anybody that wants to give me a call. But one of the things we came up with, and it was, um, it was an opportunity, I happened to be on a call for um, veterans uh, with the Tyranny Center in Tustin, and it was a Zoom call, and there was a person on there that she had just, she was starting her candy business and trying to expand, and I thought, oh, this is like an opportunity. So I contacted her afterwards, you know, we were chit-chatting um, while the presentation was going on on the side, and I said, oh, give me a call. So we talked, and her, the company that she had went to to try and promote her business suggested she align herself with a nonprofit because a lot of times um, that can expand awareness of your company. So we have come up with the Give Back Partner Program. And right now we have four give back partners. One is called Sweet Saffron, our first. This is the person I was talking about, Roya uh, Javarich, Javarichi. And um, she actually has Sweet Saffron, it's candy company made with dates. And um, so it has a low glycemic index as far as for diabetics and things like that. So I think one piece of candy is like 60 calories, which isn't too awful. Yeah, I've actually tried but, the candy. It's uh, really delicious too. Yeah, yeah, it's very good. And so she's also, like when we had the Hype for Hope, um, for anybody that registered, she donated a box of candy to be raffled off by the people that registered each week. So that was really exciting that she did that. And she came up with that one on her own. So that was really awesome. And then we have uh, Rhonda Wolford. She's, uh, she was a beauty queen. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Palm Springs. And several other beauty contests she's won. And she now does a podcast and her podcast, she will, um, she gives back dollars out of her podcast. Um, and as well as Sweet Saffron, she gives a percentage of her sales. So that's why they're called Give Back Partners. 
I ran across at a craft fair a person by the name of Erica um, Damon, and she has this company called uh, The Soul Advantage. And it's a small um, shop in Mission Viejo right now. She's hoping to expand. She might end up being in the OC marketplace or something. But um, she does crystals, jewelry, beautiful jewelry. Every time I wear it, and I'm mm-hmm. sorry I don't have a pair of earrings on, but I guess you couldn't see them on the headset anyway. <laughs> but she's got beautiful jewelry and crystals and sage. She um, does a process uh, before you leave there with your items and it's it's just very wonderful and very peaceful in there and she's giving a percentage back and she had a larger month last month and um, was very proud to announce um, the amount she was giving us so that was awesome and then our last but not least would be Shell <laughs> our podcast person and she happens to work for Berkshire Hathaway, and so she's donating um, her fair share there too. So, and also having this wonderful podcast for us to bring awareness. Oh, thanks. Yes. So, my, thank you, Shell. In my other life, I actually am a realtor. So, I um, but I've yes. always given back my entire life, and obviously since I become involved in AFSP, I was giving back to them anyway. So it made perfect sense to be an official give back partner because it's such a great cause so thanks for so if anybody for wants to do everyone. that yeah if anybody wants yeah. to join us that would be great um yes i love that so um let me ask you um there's tons of resources out there right now obviously uh, for um self-help wellness suicide prevention um w- we partner with a lot of uh, other foundations and organizations, um, Be Well mm-hmm. in Orange County. OC um, Be Well. Yeah, uh-huh. OC Be Well and, um, and NAMI, of course. Um, and uh, so tell me, is there a resource lately, doesn't matter what the source is, that you've been using um, a little bit or that you really like that you wanted to share with us? Well, my favorite, I mentioned it earlier, is the, um, just the, not a resource company, but it's a resource that AFSP has, and you can get a hold of it on our site. It's called um, the Self-Care Strategies Flyer, and it tells you, you know, about the eating habits, sleeping, um, things that you can do for your mind, body, and soul. So I think... To me, I, I love to give that out to people and to companies because it really does show that you care. And if you want to get a hold of that, you can contact me also, and you can give it out to your employees, you know, if you're listening to this. I love that. that is Let a, them know yeah, you care. That is a really good resource. Um, and then that actually is a good segue into my final question that I wanted to ask you, which is what... Um, self-care or self-help tip do, do you do yourself that might be helpful for someone else? Well, a lot of times when I get upset, um, because things do upset set us from time to time, we're all not perfect, um, I like to sit and do deep breathing, you know, in and out, count to ten, um, either that or just get out in my backyard and look at my flowers and just you know the palm trees and stuff and just relax you know just calm be in the calm i, I love that be yeah, in the nature moment and flowers also bring me peace yeah. and calm so i can relate to that that's a good one and then um for our final segment here you touched upon it slightly but um we have a listener question Hey, my name's John. I was calling about the AFSP uh, in Orange County. I was just wondering if I make a donation, where that money goes, how it's distributed, like what my money is going towards. Well, that's an interesting question, and I think it's a very appropriate one because people do want to know where their hard-earned dollars are going. So with AFSP, 80% of um, the funds that are raised go to programs, the different things that we do with AFSP. And only 20% is administrative costs. So here's my plug for needing more volunteers because we can have that type of breakdown because of our volunteers 
we keep the cost very low. In Orange County, we're all volunteers. So if you want to volunteer, give me a call. Um, but our funds go to funding scientific research, um, educating the public. So with the programs that we talked about earlier, there's um, Talk Saves Lives. We have a program called More Than Sad. It's for teenagers. And another one coming out for elementary school children, which um, we're just being trained on it now, and it's called Gizmos. And that's very interesting. It has You have to have a um, parent or guardian with the child, an adult supervisor, um, and it's on a Zoom call. And you have a facilitator, and you go through this book, and it tells about how you're going to take care of your mental health as a child. And it's for ages five and up through elementary school. So it's a, I, I think it's very exciting. I have actually two grandchildren I want to put through it myself. So it is. Gizmo is a little therapy dog who is adorable. So oh. it gives the kids yes someone to relate to. It's He's so cute. I'm like, I want one of those. <laughs> But we also do a lot of advocacy and public policies for mental health. And advocacy, normally we would send um, a representative up to Sacramento every year for State Day. Um, I've actually been twice. It's a very rigorous day. I've had like 12, 13 meetings in one day. And you're running up and down the stairs because you can't get an elevator. There's too many people there. And we would talk to our legislators and um, representatives and tell them what was on the table at the time. And advocacy is so important. We uh, recently have gotten approved. Um, the president last year signed um, uh, the bill to um, promote the three-digit phone number for suicide prevention. We have a 911 number now for emergencies. But a lot of times those people are not trained in helping with suicide prevention. So we're now going to have a 988 number. They've started rolling it out. It should completely be out by July 2022. So it's just kind of in the testing phases, phases right now. But that's really important because the 800 number for suicide prevention is a little long to remember. And if you're in crisis, a three-digit number is going to be much more effective. So that is one of the advocacy things that got passed. Um, to become an advocate, I'm giving Shell the um, link for advocacy, and I hope you people would take a look at it and just really want to join us. I call it being an armchair advocate. Um, maybe twice or, or, I mean, 12 times a year, you'll get an email. You're not spammed. We don't sell your information to anybody. Um, no extra emails. but you will get these emails when we want to have something approved or passed. And that's really important to have your support because when your senators and representatives hear that you're concerned about it, then they're concerned about it. So it really helps us get these things passed. And one of the most important things that I think recently, well, there's two of them, one was that um, Healthcare professionals did not have to have any suicide prevention training, and now they have to have six to seven hours before they recertify. Also, um, we got the um, suicide prevention hotline number on the back of the student body cards. So if your friend's in crisis, you can look on the back of your student body card or, uh, and go ahead and give them a call and see what you need to do. So those advocacy, that's very important. And also getting and then health we, care covered, um, mental health care covered right. by insurance right. the same way that yeah. your, your medical. Exactly, medical. exactly. So it, it's raising awareness. The advocacy definitely raises awareness. And then we support survivors, you know, um, by Talk Saves Lives and um, giving them a way, an outlet to try to turn something into a positive by helping others. And a lot of times by volunteering, helping others, it helps with people's loss um, when they can also share with somebody else. We do have a program called Loss and Healing also. And so we try to partner somebody up that has a similar loss. Um, so if you've lost um, a son or a daughter, we have people out there that have also lost a son or a daughter and have been trained in loss and healing. So reach out, you know, spouses, same thing. Um, we have somebody for everybody. 
so please reach out to us. So those are the programs that we benefit Orange County by. Wonderful, wonderful. And then, of course, all of the materials, the physical pamphlets, the materials for, um, right. you know, that are given out. Our outreach tables. And the outreach tables. Yeah. Um, you know, those all, that all cost money. So that's all from donations as well. All and right. please thank, thank you, listener, for uh, asking that question. <laughs> it is a very good question. You're right. And, um, and good answer. Anything else that you want to add before we sign off here, Cindy? Well, there's a, there's a lot of different things like our research has found, you know, like that it's uh, related to brain function or that 90% of people that die by suicide, there's an underlying mental health issue that is preventable. So I just want it to go away, if people to go away with knowing that suicide is preventable and you can help prevent suicide it's not just me it's not just shell it's us as a community as an orange county community we need to band together i think thank you thank you so much shell for doing this i really appreciate it thank you for joining me thank you very much for today Bye. okay everybody have a great day if you are in crisis or know someone who is, please call or text the Suicide Lifeline. You can find out how to reach the Lifeline by looking for the numbers in the show notes of every single episode. If it wasn't glaringly evident in today's episode, I'm not a mental health or suicide prevention professional, and this is not an official AFSP podcast. I am determined, however, to find a way to help stop suicide in my community and to support those affected by suicide. Thanks for listening to Hope Out of the Darkness. To learn more about Shell, the American Foundation of Suicide Prevention, and how to submit listener questions to be answered on the show, visit HopeOutOfTheDarkness.com.